four principles that Don interpreted from OSINT will become extremely practical when you're trying to create change. The description said, you'll learn about all types of conflicts and then you'll go to the gym and play around on the mats. Everything about it challenged everything I, I had come to believe growing up in hyper-masculinized sports teams and feeling disillusioned about any, any kind of voice that I as a millennial could have in the world. And then I go to this class and everything is flipped upside down. And we're studying Gandhi, we're studying Osensei, we're studying Martin Luther King Jr. It was an incredibly difficult course philosophically. What made it so palatable was that Don was teaching it. My entire worldview changed. Uh, and we would do Aikido twice a week and tie it to real world concepts. Family, uh, I mean, the kinds of things that, that we're all talking about today. He knew social change in, inside and out, and that was his area of study academically too, uh, social theory and social change. Don uh, invited his students at, of the university who were participating to join his private dojo. We transcended this uh, initial barrier between sensei and student, or mentor and mentee, or uh, old guy and young guy, uh, and and became buddies. We would get together for scotch and coffee and uh, croissants on Sunday mornings, and we would trade book recommendations. And uh, and you know, I'd play with his grandkids. We went to the IKEA Extensions uh, European seminar in 2013. Don uh, was invited to give the keynote, the hundredth anniversary of. Uh, the, the World War One, uh, and so there's this question of, okay, the Great War, the first time that mass killing at that scale had been enabled in any kind of way by technology. A hundred years had passed, and what, how is Aikido relevant to that? This conversation. That was one of the, the themes, but he kept reading into the history of Osensei and the history of Osensei and reading biography after biography and trying to find primary sources. Working with Don a lot on the speech in the weeks leading up to uh, our, our flight to Frankfurt, he came to develop this understanding of how Osensei was thinking about Aikido in his latter years. Don titled this talk, Aikido as the Japanese martial art of self-defense into the universal practice of peace. You know, even though it's from Japanese and there are Japanese terms and there were Japanese practitioners that founded it, it's really based in like a very comprehensive general Eastern tradition. And then he broke down martial and he said, well, it's kind of martial, but really it's much, there's a lot more to it than, than you know, militant uh, underpinnings. And then he broke it down and said, well, yes, it's, it's an art, uh, but it goes beyond art, and there's there there are scientific elements to it as well, and and, and it's a practice. Uh, and he kept going on and on to where it's the universal practice of peace. And then he said, well, so the four ways that the universal practice of peace needs to be applied. He believed before he gave the talk that it would be received in a controversial way. And we don't just go onto the mat and interact and. Uh, interact in mainly silence uh, and then take no time afterward to discuss uh, or to write down or to think about that fringe thought, that fleeting moment where something clicked. We shouldn't just leave it at, you know, beers after the day at the Aikido seminar where we kind of talk through a few things but, but don't really apply any sense of discipline or rigor to what we're learning and building and accumulating. If this is really a journey, you have to take the time and the effort and the discipline to apply off the mat reflexively the kind of thought that you're putting into every single reflex and moment on the mat. Uh, when an attack comes at you, you receive the attack and you create space and you welcome the attacker. Be believed deeply that Osensei thought this at the core of his being was projective Aikido. Do your best not to cause pain. Uh, and that kind of receiving uh, is what uh, enables you to turn an attack into something more constructive or positive. Are we just receiving attacks all the time in daily life? Is it just a series of things that are happening to us and we're just the recipient? Or do we ever have the agency to take pause and take a step back and conceive of a problem that we want to solve that matters to us for whatever reason and actually form a plan of attack and be, be the uke in that sense and actually initiate and that's not a bad thing. How do you pursue projective Aikido in a way where you become the problem solver and you, you're able to attack problems. The, the final pillar was this concept of 
uh, mediative Aikido? What about just an intervention where two people or three people are in conflict with one another? In the real world, what is the role of the Aikidoist? How do we kind of formalize our understanding of what it means to intervene? If you're on the subway in New York and you see two people fighting, what do you do? What are the results and what are the consequences? How do you familiarize yourself with that? If you're a parent and you have two kids, two, two of your children, and they're angry teenage boys and they're about to punch each other in the face, what do you do? Do you raise your voice as well? Don thought that, that one of the most effective things experimentally would be if you just walk up to the two people that are fighting and you smile. There was a youth version of the United Nations that was being founded by some 19 year old kid somewhere else in the United States. I have no idea how Don found out about this guy. He mailed him and they got together this group of 20 or 30 uh, young uh, activist types and created the youth version of the United Nations and it was all managed through snail mail. But it was incredibly powerful uh, that that was happening and that he was a part of that. And so from the very beginning, he, was act he had activism of sorts in his blood. I think that that's particularly relevant to what's happening in the world right now, in media and politics. The ability to like step onto our own mental balconies and laugh at everything is pretty important for our sanity. It's something he talked a lot about in his last few months was how we just, that mediation and moderation and holding the middle ground is just as much an opinion as taking a, taking a side or taking a stance on one, one side of an issue. He often talked about how kind of the shrill voices at the extremes were dominating the dialogue. Somebody taking a moderate stance and like bringing sanity to the conversation and saying, hey, why can't we just have a conversation? When it actually happens, people do take pause. It just doesn't happen often enough because people have forgotten that it's possible.